Good afternoon folks. So what we're going to be doing today is learning a little bit about mining geometry which comes under the topic of geologic geometry. And um, this is always in the section C of the Liebensart exam, the applied graphics question, okay? It's always linked with the roads as well, okay? So they kind of come under the same heading. And essentially what we're going to be learning about today is learning about how to find the strike, uh, the dip of a stratum of ore, and in places as well the thickness of that uh, stratum of ore, okay? The area I actually always like to relate this to is actually a movie show called Gold Rush, okay? So basically the idea is we're trying to find the gold that will be hidden within, say, a mountain, okay? And we can see kind of different points up here, and I'll get on to explaining that. So uh, as you look at the question here on the page, we've got three questions, question one here, two here, and three here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off with question one, so I'm just going to flash into that one there now. So for question one, it states, the map shows ground contours at 10 meter intervals, okay, vertical intervals. A, B, and C are outcrop points on the top surface of a stratum of ore, and determine, it's saying, this is what we have to find, the strike and dip of this ore, okay. So we'll just look at the 3D graphic here before we go down to the kind of, um, where the actual question is down here. Okay, we can see kind of we have this uh, landscape here, this little mountain, okay. And what we've actually got here are the contour heights, okay? So if you imagine, let's say this was at, I don't know, maybe 50, then this one would be at 60, 70, 80, 90, and so on, okay? And essentially what they're saying is we have three outcrop points. Now, first of all, outcrop points are essentially the points where a stratum of ore, let's say it's gold, okay, are coming to the surface, okay? They're not hidden, they're at the surface. So outcrop point B, C, and A, are revealed at the surface and they're showing us that there's gold here. But we can see then that each of them is at a different height. C is on the lowest height, then B is in the middle, and A is at the highest. Okay? And essentially what that does is that creates what's known as a plane surface. Okay? So this is how you're going to represent it in a while on your sheet. You will connect A to B and to C by creating this little triangular plane there. And this is actually going to relate back to something you may have already covered in class on plane geometry. Okay, what we've essentially there is we have joined all the outcrop points together to create this triangular plane surface. Okay, and that surface there, what we're going to use is we're going to find that surface, and what it's going to tell us is the dip. And what the dip really is is the angle that surface makes with the horizontal plane or the ground. Okay, so we're trying to find what angle that is at. Okay, that's essentially what we're trying to do. And then the strike line is going to help us determine the dip. So we have to actually get the strike line first. And the strike line is essentially a level line that runs across uh, this plane surface here. But we need to get the true length of that because any time you look along the true length of a line, okay, we'll see it as a point view. Okay, if we look along the true length of a line, we'll see it as a point view. And we're going to use that then basically. That point view is going to give us an edge view of this surface ABC. Okay, so a little bit involved in this, okay. Uh, once you do it a couple of times, it does become quite easy, but it's just getting your head around to the understanding of it, okay. So, as I said, A, B, and C are outcrop points on the top surface of a stratum of ore, okay. And then it says, determine the strike and dip, okay. So, this is how you would actually do it. So, I'll just move this down here so we can see it fully on our sheet, okay. So, there we have it. And essentially what we have here is a plan view, okay, showing the outcrop points of that stratum of ore. Okay, we can see point A is on 110 contour, B is on the 90, and C is on the 70. So what I actually need to do is I need to join the three of them up. This is essentially my plan view as I'm looking directly down on top of the surface. So I join A to B and B to C. And obviously C back to A. Now, I've got my plan view, okay? But what we need to do is we also need to find the elevation of that, okay? So this isn't actually that hard. Our scale is 1 is to 1,000, okay? The distance between our contours, we've done this in previous videos. I'll just put it in, just thinking here. Um, I'll actually put it in up here. It's kind of hard to see there. I'll actually, just thinking based on the space, I'll do it here. So our scale is 1 is to 1,000. What that means is one millimeter on my sheet, where it's a thousand millimeters in reality. The distance between our contours is ten. Okay, so that means I have to work up to ten thousand millimeters. 
So what did I multiply this by to get this? I multiplied it by 10. Therefore, multiply this by 10. 10 millimeters on my sheet equals 10 meters in reality. So therefore, the measurements I'm going to step up here, starting with the smallest, which is, I'm just thinking 70 is here, so I'm going to move up to about, I'm going to do a line up here. And on that line, I'm going to measure up in measurements of 10, starting from here. So starting from right here, I'm measuring up in 10s. So 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 50. I'll go one more, I might need it. Okay, and we can see that C starts at 80 here. Okay, so I'm actually going to do the one underneath and I'm going to call that one 70. So then there's 80, 90, 100, 110. Okay, so I didn't actually need the, uh, the highest ones here. Okay, the ones above. So I'm going to project those contour lines across. So this is essentially, it's like we're looking directly at this here. So those contour lines would appear as parallel lines, parallel with the XY line. And what we have to do now is we have to locate where A, B, and C is. Now we know A is exactly on the contour. Okay, it's on the 100 and 10, 1. So I project A up there. B is on the 90. And finally, C is on 80. So I connect all of them up. This is how that plane surface would appear in my elevation view. Okay, and once again, label them. So that's A, that's B, and that's C. So now what we have to do is we have our elevation view of that plane surface and we have our plan view got. Okay, the first thing it asked us was to determine the strike. Okay, so this is how you're always going to determine a strike. The strike will be got, and I always say the easiest way to remember is by going from the middle height of these three points. So A is at the top, B is in the middle, C is at the bottom. Okay, if we we're just to take their heights. B is in the middle. So what we're going to do is, from B, we're going to do a level line across, okay, until it intersects the line A to C. At that point right there, I'm going to project it down to my plan. Okay. And let's say... I'll just call that point D there. So I've got point D down here as well. Now, if D connects to B in my elevation, it also needs to connect to it in plan. Okay, so that line that I have here is the exact same line down here. And that line that I've actually got down here now is a strike. That's my strike line. Very easy to get. But that strike line, what's important to notice about that is that line there, okay, I'm just going to put this in with a little arrow, is a true length. Now, you might ask, how is it a true length? It's a true length because that line up here in elevation is parallel with one of our principal planes. It is parallel with the horizontal plane because it's parallel with what's essentially an XY line. Okay? Okay? I know that's what's starting at 70 there, and usually the XY line would probably be starting on the zero, okay? But if that is, even at that height there at 70, that is parallel, okay? So because it's parallel with one of our principal planes, okay, which is parallel with the XY line in elevation, therefore, that makes it a true length in our plan view as we look directly down on top of it, okay? So as we look down on top of that line from our elevation, as we're looking down across it, we see that it's true length in plan, okay? So now what we have to do is, we have that true length, or sorry, we have the true length of the line, and we know one of our um, main principles, okay, in DCG is if you look along a true length, okay, if you look along directly along a true length in this direction, okay, you will see that true length as a point view, okay, in an auxiliary view, okay. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to look along that true length, and then we're actually going to project out A, B, and C at the same time. And that will actually help us find A, B, and C as an edge view. Okay, so to do that, a little bit of sliding set goes here. I'm going to set up an X1, Y1, which would be an auxiliary view. I'll just do it to the side here. 
I'm just rotating my set squares there. Just bring it out far enough that. Okay. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to project out perpendicular to that x1, y1. So, project out C. It's the lowest. Project out B, which also contains D, which is our strike. And then finally, project out A. Okay, so I'll just move that down there a little bit so you can see it a bit better. Should we able to see that there better now? Okay, so what I have down here is an x1, y1 line. Okay, that is my x1, y1 line, which is my auxiliary view. Just write that in there. And what we have to do is we have to find the points C, B, and A. Okay, so what we know, simple orthographic here is, if you project from the plan, you take your heights from the elevation or the last view back. Okay, so the last view back from this X1, Y1 is this one here. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to take the heights from, I suppose, what would be now a datum line. So we know that C is up 10. So just... Now you could do this, it's quite easy to tell because I know these are in increments of 10, so B is up 20, C is up 10, and A will be up 40 millimeters. Okay, from here. But I'll just take it like that. So there's C, so follow it down to C here. So that'll be C1. Likewise, I'll do the same with B. And what's important to note here is that B is at the same height as this D point as well. They're both up 20. So therefore, the strike line, D is up 20, and it's actually projected from here as well, and also B is up 20. So that technically right point right there is a point view of my strike line. And finally, the last one then, A, come to A, follow it out to my X1, Y1, So with all those marks there, what I've actually got here now is A1, this is here is B1, D1, okay, because it's D as well, and then we've also got C1, and I'll actually say, put a little arrow here, and what this is, is a point view of strike. Okay, a little bit tricky to get your head around. Now, if this works correctly, A, B, a1, B1, and C1 should all be in a straight line because I, what I technically should have is an edge view of this plane surface here, of this triangular surface. So hopefully my accuracy is not too bad. I'm actually happy with that. Worked out perfect today. Okay. And what I would actually do then is I might continue that down there. Maybe extend this down as well. Just a little bit. And that angle that is in here that angle in there is technically my dip. Okay? Some sometimes given by this little symbol here. Okay? So that is my dip angle. Now you could obviously come along afterwards and measure it with a compass, or sorry, with a protractor and work out the exact uh, angle that makes. So what we actually have here now is, okay, this is a point view of the strike. But what this here is, the whole line is an edge view of surface A, B, C. Okay, so we're seeing that triangular surface here as an edge. Essentially, this triangle, we're seeing it as a straight line. Okay, even though it contains all the points, let's say this one down here with C. Then we had B here and then maybe A up here. Okay, and that's the idea behind it. So we're seeing that triangle there as a point, and it's showing us the angle it makes with the ground, which is our X1, Y1. Okay, so there's a little bit involved in that there, guys. And uh, that there is the first question completed. And what we're going to do now is we're going to move to question two at the top right of the page. Okay. So for question two, guys, it states, the map shows ground contours at five meter vertical intervals. Our scale is one is to a thousand. Okay, so that means, look, I'm not going to do it again because we've done this enough times now. 
but the measurements I'm going to measure up when I'm getting my plane surface A, B, C down here in plane, when I'm getting that in elevation, I'm going to be going up because the distance between the contours is 5, I'm going to be going up in measurements of 5. That's very much dictated by my scale. So it says, ABC are outcrop points, okay? So they are where the stratum of ore, let's say the gold, is coming to the surface on the head wall of a stratum of ore, okay? D is an outcrop point on the foot wall. So, first of all, two new words there. We've got the head wall, and we've also got the foot wall. And if I just read out this as well, then it says, determine the strike, which we've done in the previous question. The dip, which you've also done, so it's going to be the same method there. But the last one here, we have a new one here, and it's called we want to also find the thickness of the ore. Now, the reason we're going to be asked for the thickness here is because they've told us that we have the outcrop points A, B, C there on the head wall. Okay, what that essentially means is if you just come over here for a second, this is relating back to the previous question. Essentially, this plain surface where all these kind of like the gold bits were coming to the surface. It doesn't just appear in a thin line. Essentially, that gold will have a thickness running through it, okay? And it might actually go down maybe a couple of, I don't know, I suppose, a couple of meters into the ground, okay? So generally, the top part of it, where it's come to the surface first, that's called the head wall. And then the bottom part, okay, let's say there was another triangular surface underneath it. I'll just put in a little dot there. Another dot here. And maybe, let's say, a dot here. Okay? Now let's connect all those up. Okay, and you can kind of see it there. It's like we have a thickness. Okay, and your thickness is basically how high it is on the head wall and how low it is on the football. And the area in between is the thickness. Okay, so that's kind of the idea behind it. So what we're going to do is we're going to complete the same method, doing the strike, the dip, and then we'll determine the thickness at the very, very end. Okay, so if we look down here, we can see that A is at an 80, a height of 80, B is at a height of 75, so B is the lowest, A is at 80, and then C is at 95. So our lowest is 75. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come here to the side, I'm going to say 70 here. I usually like to give myself just a little gap. And then I'm going to measure up in 5 millimeter increments. So just marking up the 7 there as you can see it. Okay, bring it down a little bit. There we go. And I'm going to measure up in 5 millimeter increments. So 1, 5, that'd be 80, 85, 90, 95, 100. Okay, so I will draw in those lines there now. So i just move this out of the way a second. So I'll draw on those lines now. These are essentially my contour lines, as they would appear in my elevation view. Once again, right in the heights. So 75, 80, 85, 90, and then 70, 75, 80, 85, 90, and then yes, 95. Okay, so let's determine those A, B, C in my elevation as well. So A is at a height of 80. It's very important to be accurate as we can here. C is at 95. Finally, B is at 75. Okay, so <clears throat> let's find them now. So there's C. A and B. So there's our plane surface as it would appear in our elevation. Okay, that's a plan view, and there's the elevation view of it. Now what I can actually find is, I suppose, would be where D would be, which is on the 80. Just project it up and find it anyway. Right there. Mark it up there. Didn't need to. Okay. But technically that is where D would be. Okay, on the outcrop. Just put it there. Didn't ask me and I don't need to put it there, but just showing you where D would be there. Now what we have to do is we have to find the strike. Okay, so come to your elevation, and what we're going to do is from the middle height of the three points A, B, and C, I can see that A is actually in the middle. 
I'm going to do a level line going across from A and that's going to hit the line between C and B where it hits there I'm going to project that down to my plan that's on the line between C and B so there we have it right there is the point and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to connect that back to A okay what I've actually found there is my strike so there's my strike line and we know that our strike line is actually a true length so I'll just put a little tick on that one there I've done that now what I have to do is using my strike I have to actually get a uh, the dip so I'm just thinking about that which way to go so we have to look along the strike line so looking at the space here it is where we're going to have to project the cross top so what I'm going to do is I'm going to project out parallel to my strike line I'm going to project out all the points so A will come out here likewise with B and likewise with C and what I'm going to do then is just rotate my set square set up my x1 y1 which is my auxiliary view so x1 y1 that's my auxiliary view and now I'm just going to take the heights for the respect, respective uh, points so you can see here a is up a height of 10 millimeters because these were up in increments of 5 so rather than use my compass this time I'm just going to mark them so that would be a1, okay, which is actually the point view of my strike line. B is up a height of 5 millimeters. And finally, C is up a height of 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. So this is C1, B1 and if I'm accurate C should connect to B going through A and once again happy with that what I've actually found there now is the edge view of ABC but what's important to note is if I just continue that down I've also found inside in here the dip okay but before writing the dip okay I found that next thing I'm going to find is my thickness so like I did with C and I projected it out I'm also going to project out D okay and what's important to note here is how high was D up here so this is why I put it in the start we can tell that D is also up a height of 10. So from D, I'm going to measure out 10 millimeters. So there is technically, I suppose, D1. And what's important to note here is that our head wall, which is our A1, B1, C1, that's our head wall. Okay. Your head wall and foot wall will run parallel to one another. So now that we have our head wall, I can set up a line parallel to that, my set square, bring it down to where D1 is, and we know that our foot wall is parallel to it. Okay, and what's important to note there is the space in between, that is your thickness okay between the head wall and the foot wall and then finally the angle created here is our dip okay so a little bit of intricate work there on that one okay where we had the elevate or sorry the plan the elevation we got our strike okay by doing a level line in my elevation because when I look down on top of that it is parallel with the principal plane the horizontal plane making it a true length in my plan view okay 
we looked along that true length to see it as a point view which would be right there and then when we had the point view that essentially made this surface an edge view ABC okay which gave us the head wall parallel to the head wall was the foot wall okay therefore we could get the dip as well okay so a little bit in those questions guys now what we're going to do is we're going to move down to the final one on this page uh, question 3 here at the bottom so for question 3 it states the map shows ground contours at 10 meter vertical intervals A, B and C are outcrop points on the head wall of a stratum of ore D is an outcrop point on the foot wall determine the strike dip and thickness okay so this is very very much like the last question so I want to speed through this one a little bit quicker uh, there's 10 mil or 10 meters in our contours and our scale is 1 is 2000 so I'm going to measure up in distances of 10 I'm just going to check the points here B is at 100 A is at 70 and C is at 80 so my lowest is 70 so what I'd like to do is I'm going to mark lowest is 70 so this is going to be 60 here Okay, now I measure up in 10 millimeter increments. So from the 5, 70, 80, 90, 100. So projecting those across. So there's our 70, 80, 90, and 100. So let's find those as well. So like the last time, we know A is at the 70 here. So I just follow the contour over. Let's project it up. You could just mark it. B is at the 100. Finally, C is at 80. So connect all of those up. So I've got A, B, and C. So find the strike, do a level line in your elevation, okay, from the middle height, which is C in this case. Bring that across. That intersects the line A and B, right here. Check that down. It's going to hit right about there. So I'm going to bring that across then to C. So this is my strike. That's my strike line, and we know the strike is a true length. So I've got the strike there. Okay. Now what we have to do is we have to find the dip. So using a bit of sliding set squares here, going to look out along the strike line because that is a true length, and because I look along that, it's going to give me an edge view of the surface ABC. So. Out parallel to that now for me as well. Just switch there a little bit. And then finally, B is actually going to be the highest one. And perpendicular to that is my X1, Y1, my auxiliary view. Bring it out about. Okay, so now that I've got my auxiliary view, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the distances. So for A, I know A is up a height of 10 millimeters, so 10 millimeters there. I'm going to measure up 10 here. If you mark it back. So that will be A1. C is at 80. So I know it's up 20 here. we see one which is actually a point view of my strike line and finally B is up 10, 20, 30, 40 it's just about far enough there that point right there is B1 
So, what these should do, if I connect the furthest ones away from each other, B to A, it should go through C. And just about this time, actually it's probably a tiny half mil out here in this one, just so you can see it there. Close enough though. So what I'll do is continue that down lightly. And what I've actually found inside in here, it's a different colour here, is my dip. That there is my dip. Okay, so you can measure that with a protractor if you wanted. So there's our dip done. Now what we have to do is we have to find our thickness. So to find the thickness, D is at a height of 80 millimeters. So I'm going to project it out here. Last time I had the height up here as well. Not going to do it this time. And D is at a height of 80, which would be 20 millimeters up, because I can see the 80 contour from where I did my datum line, which is the XY line, 20 millimeters up. So I'll mark up 20 there. That is D1. And we know that A1, B1, C1 is the head wall. And the head wall and the foot wall run parallel to one another. So parallel to that, true D, which is a point on the foot wall. And technically, hold that around there. The space in between them is our thickness. That is our thickness inside in there. Okay, and that there is the last little portion. Now, if you really wanted, you could technically put in your contour heights here. We know that A is at 70, so I could mark up 70, 80, and have lines running across there. And we could actually get the triangular surface up here for um, our foot wall as well. Okay, and we'd have another triangle up here. It's just kind of, uh, I suppose, applying a little bit more understanding to it as well. But we have done the three things that they asked us for, to strike the dip and the thickness in all three questions, okay? Um, a little bit of understanding in those questions there, guys. Um, very helpful, and they often do come up in the, especially in the ordinary level section of the uh, mining geometry questions, okay, or the geologic geometry questions.